Tom. Hey, Phil. Sorry I missed your call there. No worries, brother. How's it going? We're going so great. How are things down there? Everything's awesome. I'm a little jealous, though, because I see today you're, uh, you're at Jones Beach Theater, my old stomping grounds. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm from the oh. island. <laughs> oh, man. It's now called the Nikon Jones Beach Theater. Exactly. Isn't that, isn't that an awesome venue, man? Yes, and I, that's why I like to give them a little nod, because they refurbished the place in 2013. It's always been great. And now it's even better. It's yeah, I was there two years there. ago. Uh, we flew up because my wife loves the Backstreet Boys, and that's as far south as they were coming. And we thought, you know what? Yeah. We've never followed a band around or done that kind of thing, you know? And we said, let's just get on a plane and go for the weekend. And uh, you, and, and I, I haven't, you know, seen um, the, the Jones Beach Theater from the stage perspective, but I got to imagine, because you've played there before, that when you look out, it, it almost looks like the like the Colosseum in Rome to me. I think how the back end, how the seats just go way up high. Yeah, it's really fun to see that, and also the uh, being that close to the water. A lot of times you get a mist uh, late at night. It gets kind of foggy. And yeah. <laughs> you need a lighthouse to sail around out there. Pretty badass, so man. Yeah, to have a concert on the beach is really unusual. Yeah, definitely. That's one of the, probably one of the only ones I can think of. I tell you, when I was seven years old, um, you know, gr growing up in um, in Santa Monica, in California, we were at the beach one day, and they're setting up this big giant stage, literal, literally just south of the pier, right on the sand. And we come to find out the Beach Boys were performing there that day, and that was my very first concert ever, seeing Whoa. the Beach Boys on the beach in California. I mean, you can't get better than that. And I think um, Rick Dees was there. He was uh, emceeing the show. So you, you can see how far back I'm going. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> All right. We're talking radio. I love growing up in the era of the radio. Oh, hell yeah. And, and FM it turned into quality. But initially, it was a lot of pretty good stuff. And Motown and Creams in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah, you throw in some, some more yeah, I mean, as a kid, we were walking around with transistor radios listening to all this great FM, you know, and uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. I just got into back into vinyl again, as a matter of fact, just started buying a lot of vinyl, and a lot of bands now are starting to release their new material and even reissuing the older stuff on vinyl because they know people want to have that, that the pops and the clicks, you know, <laughs> like they used to have. Well, Definitely, I'm with you a million percent. I have a, like a collection of turntables. I'm always spinning records, and I'm amazed that once you get used to that sound, you go back to a normal stream or you know, whatever you're else digital, yeah. and it's like, wait a second, what's missing? What? What? <laughs> Someone forget to turn half the stereo on? What, where's the rest of the sound? Yeah, and not only that, so but satisfying. but at least with a record, you know, you can slow it down a little bit if you want to learn that guitar lick and you know, note for note, you know. <laughs> Can't do that with digital. Come on. <laughs> That's a great idea. Well, I'm looking. He I'm looking here that 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 foreigner man. Forty years. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, and there's 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 a few bands out there that are that are you know hitting that plateau. We were just with Ario Speedwagon last night, and uh, right. they're pretty much there. And um, so you know the Stones, of course, and things like that. I mean, when you when you got into this business. Did you think you would still be thriving this far into it down the road? I, I certainly hoped so. Mm -hmm. When you set out to become a musician, for me, I always just thought, if I work really hard and have a little bit of luck, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rough business. It's a really it rough really business. Is. You know, the odds, your parents are going, you know, 99% of musicians fail. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My dad kept saying, when are you going to get a real job? When are you going to get a real job? <laughs> and I, start, I started working with Aerosmith in 89, and he was on an airplane somewhere, and he called me later and said, we mentioned Aerosmith, and they knew what we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so so they, they got a little glimmer of hope inside them now, huh? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then it changed from, when are you going to get a real job? I'm so busy now, right? Foreigner, we do 120 shows a year, just gone. 260 days of the year, right? Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. How, how, how's life on the road like? Uh, I don't know if you travel with family or if you're separated from them. I mean, what is, 
I mean, I, I, I roadied for Green Day for three months during their Dookie oh, album, so I know, I know kind of how that is a little bit, being separated sure. from your family. But, but e- e- even now, I think it's a lot easier with, with the technology. You know, you can Skype and things like that, but, uh, yeah. but, but it's not the same as having them with you, you know? Easy, easier. It, I'm not sure whether it's better or worse, mm. but I think it's easier to maintain a relationship because you can stay in touch with video and and cell phones. The old days, we didn't even have cell phones. Yeah. We didn't have CB radio. You got on that tour bus, the Silver Eagle, you know, and you were watching videotapes of a Die Hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, exactly. It, over and over and over. <laughs> yeah. Weapon 2, here we go. Let's make some popcorn. We didn't... really, we used to watch movies as a band and make popcorn. That's awesome, man. You know, I was fun. with, um, I was with Lou Graham last week. He was in town, you know, doing the, <laughs> The Rock Pack tour with uh with some you know John Prine and all these guys, Thomas, yeah, yeah and, and all these guys and he was fantastic you know really great and oh, it, it, it it it's nice to hear that that him and Mick are talking and things like that and 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 I didn't mm-hmm. ask him but but we had heard that he might be you know jumping in on a show here and there with Foreigner uh, on this tour this uh-huh. summer. As part of the 40th anniversary, uh, it was kind of celebration. Mm-hmm. Mick just literally reached out to the guys and said, "Anytime you want to stop by, please come up, come down and sit in for a few songs." So we've already done it with uh, Dennis Elliott and Rick Wills. We've done that a couple times, and the other guys have said, "Yeah, that sounds like fun." So we're kind of just wait and see what happens. Nobody knows when, where, if, how, but I think it's going to happen. So. Oh God, I hope it's so. Wonderful to see. Yeah, they, they're so cool together. I, I was there when they got inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. Yeah, I saw and, that. And yeah, they were joking around and telling stories. It's just really, really good to see that. It, it warms everybody's heart. Yeah, I mean, at one time, you know. Maybe it called for that, but you know, when twenty-something years uh-huh. goes by or whatever, you know what? We're older, we're more mature. You look back and you say, "Hey, you know, we got into this together. We wanted to make a name for ourselves oh, and everything. And look what we've accomplished. And now let's get rid of all that crap, you know, and just move on as uh-huh. human beings and and give the fans what they want. They want to see Mick. They want to see Lou. They want to see Rick Wills. I see you guys uh, were in Spain with him, you know, with Rick Wills and." Uh, yeah. And all yeah. that stuff that had to be phenomenal. And and speaking of Spain, um, and not to take away from America, but I mean, I've seen some of these shows where, you know, they have them in these big stadiums. And I mean, literally, when the band stops singing, the whole arena like starts singing a song to you. You know what I mean? I mean, it's it's like a soccer That's match a almost. Cheer. Yeah, it's a cheer, but they sing in unison. Yeah, exactly right. I don't think that compares to America in any way. I mean, you go to South America and these countries, man, they're just so, I think, starved for American music that when you get there, it's like they're just going to celebrate it, you know, 300%, you know, because they don't know when you're coming back again, you know? Yeah, interesting. Uh, there is a lot of singing in unison in those countries. Yeah. Uh, getting back to Mick and Lou, just to finish that yeah. idea, you have to remember they're both just total classy guys. They're yes. Top shelf class act all the way, mm-hmm. a million percent. So that's what you're going to see, uh, you know, when those guys are hanging around together. They're, they're just, they're so uh, beyond everything mm-hmm. now that it, uh, it's a very peaceful, tranquil kind of vibe. It's time to go out and have fun. Yeah. They're laughing and joking at the stories that we hear. <laughs> oh, I could imagine, yeah, because... Just marvelous, marvelous I mean, stuff. Kelly must be sitting back uh, and going, wow, I missed all of this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's a good thing, though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, we're all doing the same kind of thing, uh, probably just on a different scale. Well, we're seeing, <laughs> we're going to be seeing you guys on Tuesday... August 1st, you know, with Cheap Trick. I know you guys have toured with them before. And uh-huh. we've seen you here in Dania Beach not too long ago. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's been a year, a little over a year. Fan-freaking-tastic, I tell you. So we're, 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 oh, we're just fun. really jacked up to see you guys again. And um, I see you guys got a new thing uh, here called the um, Very Important Beer Meet and Greet. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, and that, and that's with Bruce Watson and, and Michael Bluestein, who are obviously yeah. 
big beer junkies, I guess, and, and, and they're hosting this? Sure, sure. Brucey and Bluesy. That's yeah. what we call them. <laughs> These guys are connoisseurs. They gave me this beer the other night. I don't even like beer, but mm-hmm. I loved it. I couldn't stop drinking it. So they know what's going on. I guess there's a beer revolution going on. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm, I just stick with your basic Coors Light. You know, I'm not really too into the, know, the different flavors. I don't know flavors. about this, but yeah. what happens is these local breweries are using the finest ingredients mm-hmm. and following the, the most uh, meticulous recipes. Yeah. And it's fresh. It's not filtered. Mm-hmm. They don't have to ship it as far. They don't have to filter it. All these things they can do that make it into a different kind of experience. So that's what they bring when they do a VIB. Ah. And the people that love beer get a chance to go out and learn about these craft beers. And Michael and Bruce uh, are fin- just wonderful instructors <laughs> in the world of beer. And they team up with these incredible breweries that sponsor the events that bring down their best stuff. Wow. You know? It's like they want to show their A game so mm-hmm. the people that are at these events get to experience that yes. really, really tasty brew. Well, here's an idea. Since they're so into it, why not create their own craft beer? I mean, we have so oh, many people yeah, in the music ready. business that are now in the wine <laughs> business. and so. already thinking about it. No kidding. Sure. Awesome. Sure, ready, ready to go. Well, speaking of drinking, uh, you guys are going to be performing on August 1st at the Perfect Vodka Amphitheater. And let me tell you, there's yeah. tons of that in the green room. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I love the They sound bring it by that. the cases. I tell you, we're standing, you know, waiting to go backstage, and you just see this guy with a dolly hand truck. And there's like four uh-huh. cases there, and they're just going in the back. So, uh,. I think you're going to have not only enough for there, but enough to stock the bus right. up. You know what Maybe I'm saying? after the show. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> after the show for me, i got to get through that sax solo and urgent. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't blame you. For that. <laughs> so, so what's coming up next for Foreigner, man? Well, we got uh, this summer tour, which we're really having a fantastic time doing uh, with Cheap Trick and Jason Bonham. Yes. Led Zeppelin Experience. Uh, so there's a ton of shows left to go uh, that'll probably take us through most of the summer and then uh, I'm not sure what's next but I do know we have a DVD coming out before Christmas hopefully of us with the symphony orchestra in Lucerne, Switzerland oh very nice and it is so cool Bill I, uh, <laughs> normally I'm not sure about a symphony with a rock band but this thing is happening Oh, sweet. You, you know who did that, too, was um, Dennis DeYoung with Sticks. Every now and then we'll, we'll get, you know, he'll go to a venue and get the local orchestra to back him up. And let me tell you, I can't wait to hear that with Farner. That's going to be cool. phenomenal. Oh, I can't even explain. It's so cool. Like Double Vision, this thing's going, ticka, 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 Double Vision, ticka, 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 ticka. They're just flying, you know. Wow. And Speaking of. He's like an 80 piece choir. My gosh. Go with it so when we do the box here, like, oh, I can't wait to hear, I uh, want to know what love is yeah, with an 80 piece uh, chorus, man. That would be cool. Sounds great. massive, like, uh, you know, gothic theater or something. Yeah, because I know, I know on, on I, I guess most of your shows, maybe or something, you get you get these students to back you guys up on, I want to know what uh, love is. Yeah, that's been a really cool program. Yeah. It started at least five years ago. Uh huh. Uh, because pre- previous to that, previously, <laughs> we would have choirs just occasionally come down and sing uh, from churches or gospel choirs yeah. or any kind of vocal groups. And uh, what happened was we saw that the schools were having so many music programs taken away from them. Yes. That, that we were trying to think, what can we do to help? Mm-hmm. And uh, Nick Jones came up with the idea, why don't we have, because a choir is such a part of that song, it's on the original. Yep. What, what if we had some schools come down and they could sing and we could make a donation to their music program? Yes. It's kind of like giving them their first gig. Right. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, uh, that's what we started doing. And the choirs that turned out were just very impressive. And they still are. It's, it's usually the stronger choir in the area. Yes. They have a, a little contest. 
and the real strong choir comes down. So when they hit the stage, they like take the stage by storm, you know? Yes. It's great to see that confidence in kids. I know exactly what they're feeling because when my parents were, were separating, I went and stayed with family for two years in Wheeling, West Virginia. And of course, I was always in the choir. Not that I can sing great. But it was a great way to get out of class, so it was good. And, and there's always a lot of girls in choir, so it was it was fantastic, you know. And and Joe Cocker was coming to town, and our chorus backed him up on "Love Lift Us Up Where We Belong," so we got to actually sing with Joe Cocker and back him up. And I'll never forget that experience. So you guys are giving all these kids. This, this first time big stage experience and you never know where that's going to go with them you know in yeah. life that's what we would hope that, that it's some, something that they can draw from later on in life as they continue in the performing arts or any part of the performing arts you know, staging, lighting you still have that experience of feeling the stage underneath you in front of those people yeah and, and it's a shame, like you said, that the, the school programs and things like that are going to a lot of cuts. So what I do personally is I'll go on Craigslist every week, and we'll find violins and guitars that people have bought, put in a corner, and yeah. never used them anymore, and now they want to get rid of them. So we just buy them up, and we donate them to local schools. Um, or whenever we go backstage, we try to get a band to sign a guitar like you guys did the last time you were here, and we donated yeah. it to the Miami Dolphins foundation you know the football team and they do all this great stuff for a thanksgiving they'll take like 500 underprivileged kids and they'll take them shopping for thanksgiving back to school shopping oh, for yeah. for for school clothes so they don't go in you know ratty old outfits and you know people pick wow. on them and that's and school really supplies and stuff, stuff. so you, you definitely have to give back and that's what i love about foreigners that you guys are all about giving back to the community and um and you guys still doing the um selling the cds for the uh the guitar raffles at the shows i believe so yeah everyone i've been to you guys have done it and i always buy four of them and i never freaking win <laughs> but i know where the, but i know where the money's going so that's that's a win right there and i can share the cds and donate those to the schools as well so it all works out man i love it Sure, we can do this, but what else can we do? Absolutely. Can we All right. Well, Tom, I thank you so much for your time um, and, and rock that, that amphitheater tonight, man. They're going to uh, love thanks, you. Bill. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing you again on Tuesday, August 1st at the Perfect Vodka Amphitheater. And, uh, yeah, if we can bring a guitar back and have you guys sign sure. it so we can donate it or, or we can give it away on our website, whatever we can do, yes. that'd be awesome. That sounds great. And, um, John set us up with uh, with a girl that took Melissa. Melissa. Yes. She She's she so just good. took him backstage. Boom, boom. Here you go. Everything was great. The only thing is, when we came for the meet and greet, we did the picture with you guys, and I really um, didn't get to say hello because you know those are really really quick. Oh yeah. And I had brought brought you guys like these leather cuffs, you know. Uh, with, with skulls on them and all this great stuff, but they wouldn't let us hand it to you at the meet and greet. So hopefully I can uh, hand those off to Melissa and make sure you guys get all this stuff. Yeah, we'd love that. So you can go out and, and wear it and rock it out, man. <laughs> Sounds great. I really appreciate it. We'll hope to see you there. Absolutely. All right, we'll see you in, a, in a, what boils down to like a week and a half. So we're ready. We're psyched. Safe travels to you and the guys on the road, and we'll see you then, brother. Thanks, Bill. All Take right. Care. We'll see you. Cheers, right. man. Bye-bye.